now. So I'm going to start. And now I'm going to start broadcast. Hello, everyone. Appreciate you being here. Um, I'm waiting to see who shows up. We've got a good group today. My name is Gary Sokolo, and some of you are probably familiar with me because we've been doing this for since 2011. And uh, I'd like to thank you for being here, but uh, we also uh, have some other people online. And anyway, th this is me. I'm going to wave, and now I'm going to wave goodbye. Uh, and I'm Gina Bagnani. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Chris Ibar. Good afternoon. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. All right. And so here, here are some other pictures of us. And uh, there's Caitlin Davidson, who's on today but does not have a camera, and Michael Stafford, who... Uh, is usually and will continue to be on these webinars. Uh, on the other hand, I am retiring on April 30th, so you see me disappear. Um, so who's going to be taking over for most of the access management responsibilities? It will probably be Gina Bagnani, um, uh, Chris Ibarra, also who introduced himself is currently our level of service coordinator. So um, he will be working on some of the things that we talk about today. Um, for those of you that have not been on before, uh, by clicking on the orange arrow, uh, you can open or close your control panel. Uh, from the view menu, You can also set the control panel not to auto hide if you prefer to always keep it open. And, and I do that. Uh, the audio pane provides audio information. And by default, you join the webinar via mic and speakers. Um, you can use the telephone. Sometimes if you don't have uh, headset or a good microphone, I mean a good uh, headset, then uh, it's best to use the telephone. It gives you a uh, Utah number to call and put in the audio pin. And this way, uh, if you decide to ask a question in person, uh, in, in your own voice, uh, we'll be able to unmute you and hear you on the telephone. So you put your questions in the question box and we will do our best to answer it. Um, if you want to raise your hand, that's the raise hand uh, sign right there, and that's good too, especially if you want us to recognize you and unmute you so you can talk. And that's how, that's how this works. And um, to answer some questions, if we, we get a lot, uh, yes. Uh, we are recording this. Um, yes, you will receive a handout uh, of this when we are done, and uh, as well as a summary of the, the, the major points. And the uh, PDF handout we send you will contain live links. So, all right. Um, if you've been uh, tuning in to us a lot, you'll know that we've been having these webinars for a long time, and we've tried to do them monthly, but you know that uh, we have not always been able to keep that schedule due to many things. Uh, we have decided to go um, every other month with the second Thursday on odd months. and. 
this is the new schedule for the rest of the year. And if you have, I will be sending this all to you, but some of you have uh, the ability to take a screenshot in case you want to know for sure. Since this is my last personal webinar, there are some things I really wanted to get across if I hadn't already. And that is that you obviously are interested in education on transportation planning. Therefore, I, I have to tell you about Mike on Traffic. And Mike on Traffic has a web page. And uh, here it is down here. It's just mikeontraffic.com. And also, Mike on Traffic has um, a YouTube channel. And just recently, he recorded two YouTube uh, webinars. And, and let me tell you, unlike mine, they're kind of short um, and therefore easier to go through. He uh, very, um, very uh, impressed with the, uh, the recent one that he did on numbers every traffic engineer should know. I would add any transportation planner should know them too. Uh, these are live links to those um, uh, webinars. He tries to keep them to a half hour. He also did an excellent review of the 10th edition uh, trip generation manual uh, and goes into a lot of detail, uh, not necessarily geared towards Florida, but definitely geared towards the entire 10th edition. Okay, so I'd like to know if 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 I, if I hammered this enough. Uh, are you familiar with the Mike on Traffic um, website or webinars? And I'm going to select the poll so you can launch it. Just simple yes or no. Okay. All right, I'm going to wait until the majority of you answer. You know, they tell us that if we put these, these polls in, it'll help keep you awake. And so, uh, in addition to, I really do think that this is important information and like to know uh about this okay we have definitely a majority of people um, who have voted so i'm going to close the poll and share it with you um so what you see is that yes we've done a good job at getting the news about mike on traffic who he's he's from the uh twin cities area and i, I cannot speak more highly of the work that he does to to get things out. Um, so uh, with that, I also have another, oh, I gotta hide this. There we go. Now, um, we also highly recommend that you look at our YouTube channel. Um, we have many of these educational webinars already uh, online, uh, ready for you to watch. I mean, we have probably over 50 of them. Uh, the link to our entire site is up on the uh, top right here and you can subscribe to it if you'll want to. Um, I went through this morning and tried to get some of the ones that I thought would be most interesting to uh, a, uh, a general uh, planning, transportation planning audience and, and gave you uh, direct links to them. This is on complete streets and access management. Uh, this is on basic 
trip generation, a little outdated because uh, we now have a 10th edition, but the basics are definitely taught there. What is a trip? Uh, what is a pass by trip, et cetera? Um, then we also have uh, the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida. Um, a lot of good things for local governments that, that we have uploaded here. And this is for access management best practices for local governments. And the other is one that uh, when, when we started showing what uh, videos we had available, just people were really, their ears perked up. We have one called what to expect when you're expecting a bypass. And uh, it's not about um, heart bypass. This is about uh, a bypass around your city. And uh, uh, Cutter uh, did an excellent review of the things that local governments and communities ought to consider um, before and after they make the decision on to have or not have a bypass around their community. So um, I'm going to ask you now, um, have you ever been actually gone over to our YouTube channel? And because we want to see about uh, whether we need, I know we need to clean it up, but I'm thinking we might need to uh, um, promote it a little differently. So. Um, asking you to and and while you're you're doing this, I'll point out that one of the negatives of our YouTube channel is that uh, most of the webinars are unedited. So you will find things like time spent on these, uh, these polls that are really not going to be that interesting to you. But the good thing is, is you can pass them. You can go right through them to, to uh, where you're more interested. Uh, Okay, I am going to close the poll and share it with you. And uh, wow, okay, so uh, most of you have not been there, have not been there at all. So let me point out so when you get your, um, your presentation, uh, like this. When you get your presentation and um, a handout with the live links that you do go and check in. Okay, and you can subscribe to it. So I'm really just trying to, before I go, get you familiar with all the, the really good resources that we have. Uh, okay. So today we're going to discuss not just one, not just one uh, subject. We're going to discuss a few things that we thought would be interesting to you, and uh, one of them is the uh, trip generation of the tenth edition ITE, and some of the studies that we've done recently as well as uh, some of the changes happening in, in our office. Uh, we now are uh, called systems implementation. And uh, you have met most of us, you know, you have met most of us online here. Uh, and uh, they will be uh, leading new responsibilities and updating a lot of the things that uh, we have been using and giving uh, these webinars on. So trip generation. I want to point out that 
finally, at the end of 2017, the 10th edition uh, trip generation manual came out, and it is pretty impressive, as I hope to show in, in a little bit. Uh, it is gigantic, and um, if things work well, uh, I hope to show you um, if I have this on the right thing. These are three pretty massive volumes. It is the biggest. It's gone from 1,000 to about 3,000 pages. Uh, Mike on Traffic um, has a good overview of some of the changes in the different land uses. So, uh, by and large, uh, when it comes to the numbers of land uses that we still have, a lot of them have not added numbers of studies, but for some of the very important ones, they actually um, have changed and added some new uh, categories, which we will talk about in a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. So we are going to be doing a new group of studies and uh, this should be started in the next month or so. I will uh, be part of the, uh, the initial parts of the study, but after that it will be uh, Gina and Christopher who will uh, probably, and, and, and Michael, uh, who we introduced but's not online today. Uh, we really um, asked a lot of people uh, what they thought, which land uses uh, needed to be studied. We looked at a number of them and that you see them here. Uh, and it has been whittled down to our likely choices of downtown groceries like they have in Orlando and Jacksonville, and also uh, some of the uh, in-town Walmarts, the neighborhood markets, uh, with a special emphasis on pedestrian traffic, okay? And since they, they do have entrances that are close to the street, close to the sidewalk, uh, we need to figure out the best way to, to get this data. Um, because people do drive there, we need to know the difference between those people who get there by bicycle, walk, and car. So this might turn out to be kind of expensive, uh, but we're going to get into that as we cost out this study. Uh, the other is what we used to call in-town small box, which really the ITE now calls variety stores. Um, they got rid, they, meaning ITE, got rid of something called specialty retail, which was always, in my opinion, a very stupid uh, land use that was used by almost anybody who wanted to um, de-emphasize their impacts. Uh, but we, we uh, did these studies on, uh, these are like the general dollar and, um, the uh, family dollar. These are not necessarily the dollar stores, though a, a quick look at it said that it, the numbers from this study could be used for the dollar tree where everything is a dollar. It's a lot closer than, than let's say the uh, specialty retail. So um, we are going to uh, try and have a uh, uh, a better look at the pedestrian and bicycling traffic that goes into these. And 
we will keep you in touch on that. Now, I um, need to make you aware of an excellent study that was done by our District 7 office. District 7, for those of you that are not familiar, is the Tampa, uh, Pasco County, Hillsboro County area. And um, the last time we did a study was 2012 on, and there were no Wawa. Uh, stations here and uh, but but there were plenty of what the the the, the new modern uh, gas convenience uh, retail combinations that was something that was uh, um, that was something of, that, that was really missing and confusing in the last edition of the tenth of the last edition of the ITE um, and so uh, not only did Florida DOT do some studies, but I think studies were done all over. And we knew that Wawa was uh, coming into uh, at least central Florida at the time. And so uh, District 7 uh, funded a study to, to look at the specific um, characteristics, trip making characteristics of Wawa. Um, now, these are the areas around Tampa where there's a, there was eight places that were studied. This is just an example of one of them on Bears Avenue. And I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, um, Walmart seems to do a, a pretty good job of, of uh, interconnection with neighboring properties, as well as, um, let me point out, a good job of uh, pedestrian accessibility from the sidewalk to the store. And this is something that, that because of our um, this is something that uh, it's something that, that we're going to try to do a better job on in the future with access management, and that is look at the accessibility uh, to pedestrians as well. Um, okay, that seemed like my voice wasn't coming through. Somebody was mentioning that. Okay, so um, so there's the Wawa and there's the Walmart. Now. District 7 did this study, and let's take a look at it. The PM peak weekday hour of the generator, the highest afternoon peak of the traffic coming out of that uh, um, use, they came up with 26 trips for per fueling position. And in comparing this, now they they did this study a little before the, 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 the and people got the tenth edition. So they compared it to the ITE rates in the ninth edition, and you can see um, there is a significant difference between what they found and what was uh, in the ninth edition for the convenience uh, markets with gas stations, okay? Um, but I'd like to say that the 10th edition of the ITE trip generation manual, and it is called a manual now. I, I, all many years we made sure people called it uh, a report, which it was, and they changed the name. It is now a manual. Um, uh, the ITE came up with a new land use called Super Convenience Market Gas Station, and uh, they came up with a 28 per um, fueling position 
during that same time, that's a, a peak hour. This is um, actually, this is, a, um, this is, I got the wrong one up here. Uh, this is PM peak compared to AM peak. So I'm going to, to correct my error here and uh, take a look at the AM peak. And I know this is the AM peak of the generator. This is a 28.97 versus a 28. They've gotten much closer now that they've started uh, studying the larger, uh, more modern gas stations. Uh, when traveling uh, to Chengdu, China, uh, a few years ago, I was impressed that uh, there was something called a Wawa there, uh, no relation, but also uh, a very popular uh, convenience market uh, that I went to frequently when I was there. So, and I also want to point out something here that if you uh, go to China, and I don't know if they have this here, um, but cucumber flavored potato chips are extremely good. They have blueberry. I didn't like that as much. All right, moving on to another land use that, that uh, has become really uh, uh, controversial in uh, Florida are the charter schools. Um, I just read this morning that the growth in charter schools in Florida and nationwide is slowing a bit, but it is still growing. It is still growing here, just some not going to go into it in some of the uh, charts of, of, of growth uh, of charter schools. Now, um, when, when uh, our district people would say, oh, oh these charter schools, we, we, we're really, they're causing so much disruption in the traffic. I said, like, come on, it's a school, for goodness sake. Um, I went to a meeting. Uh, with Hillsborough County and our District 7 office. And uh, looked at a, a site plan for, uh, for a, a proposed uh, charter school. Now, in some of our districts, they are making the charter school people use micro simulation uh, to try and prevent queuing, uh, backing up on the state highway system. And uh, this school, I believe, had 800 proposed students. And you can see, when I saw at the meeting, this is, you can see, this is just a photo of, of uh, a presentation made by, by staff, and I said, what are those arrows? They couldn't possibly be lanes, uh, but they were. Uh, they are lanes, and you can see how it winds around the school. Uh, this is a, a different uh, school, and you can see also that they uh, are very um, aware of the um, backing out on the state highway system. And then the, they're not agreeing to do this just because it's the right idea. They're doing this because the ones that were built without this have caused major backups uh, on the state highway system. So, um, I don't know if I said this uh, before, that uh, um, the study that was done for District 7, uh, when you get it, uh, you will see a uh, link to a secure download of the entire uh, report, but it's only that this link is only good until March 29th. All right, so, so if you want it, try to download it soon. So the, um, these are the, the studies that were done in the Tampa area for the charter schools. And 
one of the reasons that charter schools have been causing so much disruption of traffic is, and I didn't realize it was the fact that a lot of them don't offer busing like a normal public school does. And uh, so that was one of the things that was studied uh, here. And they collected their data and this is what it showed. Um, you can see that uh, this is for the AM peak hour generator, basically 1.1 1 .1, uh, trips per student. And here are all the, the regular public schools. And you can see um, it comes closer to the, the K through eight private school. Um, when, during the P hour, PM peak hour of generator, uh, you can see what we tried to do, what the consultant tried to do was show uh, it is 58% less, 55% less, 99% less. Again, the private school was, was a lot closer to, to the uh, charter school. And charter schools are not private schools, okay? Um, they are public schools. And what I wanna point out, like I just did, that, that they really, uh, during the AM peak hour generator did not, the regular, uh, the, the typical public uh, school that uh, really would under predict the number of trips. And a lot of it probably having to do with the lack of bus service. Now, the 10th edition, uh, in my opinion, comes to the rescue again. Uh, they have um, a new uh, land use code called the uh, charter elementary. This is just elementary school, but it it shows during the AM peak hour of generator a 1.14 per student these trips, and if you take a look at that, you will see that the uh, The 1.14 and the 1.07 are a lot closer together. And I think that if you were to look at the PM peak hour, it would be similarly close. The latest proposal coming out of our district office, they, they seem to be just doing some great work. Uh, for those of you that are outside the state of Florida, especially if you work for uh, the State Department of Transportation. Um, one of the good things about having a decentralized uh, agency su such as we have is that they have the ability to, to be independent and to get studies done that they think are important. Um, and District 7 has been at the forefront of this. Um, they are currently working on putting together a scope to quantify pedestrian and bicycle activity. Uh, so pedestrian and bicycle trip generation. And um, so that's at the beginning of, of its, uh, um, it's at the beginning stages of putting together a scope. So, uh, if you stay with us, uh, you know, hope, hopefully we'll, when we find more, we will uh, let District 7 make a, a presentation on this. Uh, this is not from District 7. This is actually from California. It, um, they did a number of pedestrian and bicycle uh, and transit uh, trip generation studies. And uh, that has been uh, further studied uh, and I just wanted to show you, now most of these I believe were around uh, significant transit 
Um, but you'll see here, um, as they looked at the modes uh, coming into, in this case, a, a, an apartment building with ground floor commercial, um, you'll see here, this was the split uh, of modes. And this is the way I think we're headed. Um, I got a question here from uh, Albert. Uh, in the future, charter schools will be great to collect maximum two length um, and could not agree with you more. Um, I think that if you read the District 7 report, they even have some uh, uh, discussion on that. I, I, don't, I don't think it was just trip generation they studied, but the queuing, like, like you said, Albert, is... Uh, is actually much more important than than the trip generation because backing out on the public street system is is a, a real real problem. Um, DOT slowly is is moving into uh, the era of complete streets. We have a complete streets. Um, policy and we're still trying to find uh, ways to incorporate it into every part of our business now it's easier said than done our entire uh, uh, design manual is being rewritten to uh, have guidance by context zones and uh, we have some districts that are actually going out and uh, identify, identifying context zones uh, of all the state highways running through their area. And that uh, in the future, design will not just be based on some stock uh, design speed uh, and uh, pedestrian amenities, but would be based on the actual context that we're trying to do that now. And we are developing our, our design manual to be um, sensitive to that. Uh, this is another webinar that we recorded back in 2016 on uh, data collection this is not for trip generation. This is for along roads. Um, our District 5 office, which is around the Orlando area, has been at the forefront of documenting on uh, its uh, website, working along with local governments uh, to actually give bicycle and pedestrian crossing and, um, and, and ridership numbers. Um, and uh, so uh, our, what do they call it, the, the transportation data and analytics portion of DOT, we call it TADA, so we can remember transportation analytics and data, um, or no, transportation data and analytics. Uh, but it, it used, it's just the one that we used to call um, statistics. So they broadened their, their field of, uh, of interest. All right. So um, here is, the, you can see on the bottom left, a link to uh, 2016 uh, webinar. Uh, done by the people involved in this, and it, it should be pretty interesting to you. Okay. Uh, we have lots of trip generation resources on our website. Just want to point out where it is. And um, I just need to explain to you that there's a little bit of uh, hiding that's going on here uh, and let me explain it to you. Uh, the link you can see is there. Um, if you go to this, this says trip generation 8th edition, it is a spreadsheet 
of many land uses, uh, working with the PM peak hour only because that has generally been the one that has been most studied here in Florida. And then when you get to the trip generation ninth edition versus the eighth edition, uh, this is a uh, spreadsheet that was put together to compare the differences between the ninth and the eighth edition. And uh, the really cool thing about it is that if you want to calculate things by the ninth edition, and many of the land uses haven't changed that much, uh, that it allows you to do that. This was a joint work between our cocoa maintenance office, our safety office, myself, and uh, something that uh, Mike on traffic took and, and improved on it. And then ITE told him to take it off his, his uh, uh, website because they thought it was a copyright violation. Um, but here it is, they haven't asked us to take it off. And um, I'm hoping that somewhat, uh, when we do more study on what the difference is between the ninth and the 10th, that, that we will update our spreadsheet. And maybe to uh, make sure we're not stepping on the to uh, toes of ITE, which I think have done a great job on their latest edition. I don't want to take anything away from them. Uh, that we would create a uh, spreadsheet, but it wouldn't be full featured. You know, it would just be the major land uses, not all of them, and it would just be uh, um, PM peak, something something that that uh, would get you in the ballpark. But we did these studies from two thousand. 12 to 2014, and if you go to that link here at the top under the title, you will in fact uh, be able to download all of these. And, and let me also, uh, if you haven't had a chance to play around with our website, encourage you to do that. Okay. Um, this part of the webinar, I um, want to talk, we want to talk to you about some of the changes that um, are, are coming up in our office, some of the, the, the guidance that we've given presentations on that may, you may have used that um, are going to be updated. Gina will be taking over most of these responsibilities. So Gina, as I go through this, feel free to tell me what I'm leaving out or what I got wrong. <laughs> sure, Gary, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, the Site Impact Handbook, which really was the, the impetus to start all these public webinars uh, itself, is being updated. And uh, we have been working closely with uh, uh, our, our policy planning division in the future of this handbook. And um, we've had so many things like our, uh, uh, our complete streets policy and things like uh, intersection control evaluation called ICE. And in addition to that, changes in the growth management uh, legislation is, is as recently as uh, a month ago, that make changes to this document important. And um, I, the other thing is when we wrote uh, this uh, handbook, uh, level of service standards uh, were the rule of the land. And uh, as you'll see later, um, we have changed from having level of service standards to something called level of service targets. And um, so, uh, which really was based on a benchmarking study that showed basically people, uh, local governments and state governments have had these so-called level of service standards for many years, but 
they've had to settle on having targets because if you want to have level of service C or D anywhere, you probably will not have any approved development in any area that is currently developed. And we're trying uh, our best to, to create more infill development. So um, we're also going to be focusing on uh, more multimodal options. Uh, and uh, as, uh, also within the mitigation of, of the impacts. The next uh, project that uh, Gina will be uh, managing, and I'll be helping out you know, in the last month or so here, uh, is taking the creation of something called the Access Management Guide. And uh, those of you uh, that are familiar with some of our work, we have a driveway I'll just call it a driveway handbook and a median handbook, uh, which goes into some of the sticky questions of uh, how to make decisions when you cannot meet the standards. And unfortunately, that is a good percentage of the time. So, uh, but there is a lot of overlap and uh, Gina has taken it upon herself to uh, work with Kittleson and Associates um to combine these two into an access management guide or amg and uh this will reflect as i said uh, uh the, co the combination of, of, uh, of any overlap um we are rewriting uh our permitting rule right now um there is a new, we, we talked about it, the, uh, the uh, FDOT design manual called the FDM. And then there's the intersection uh, control evaluation uh, strategy that many states are now taking. And that is to, uh, to really suggest more of uh, the um, intersections that may in increase safety, things like the roundabouts is where it started, but they're looking at uh, displaced uh, left turns as well as uh, restricted U um, crossing U-turn uh, intersections. And uh, we want to make sure that all these new and exciting things are gonna be part of, of the new access management guide. As I said earlier, uh, we changed our policy from level of service standards to say targets, uh, to provide more flexibility, especially in built out areas. And uh, for this reason, plus all the other things that, that we've mentioned, that's the ICE and the uh, Complete Streets uh, initiative that we have, um, we need to update our level of service handbook. Okay, this just really reiterates what we're saying. We're getting really close. We're getting really close. Um, would you say so, Gina? I have the final. I received the final uh, today. Uh, right. yes, I did, so. <laughs> no, we're even more than close. <laughs> so the case, the case is closed. <laughs> the case is closed. <laughs> so it's not only ongoing. And um, one of the most nationally useful things that, that we did starting back in uh, probably 1998 uh, was um, actually even before that, was to create a um, planning level lookup tables for um, level of service. And it's been through a few changes over the years. We've tried to update it every time a new highway capacity manual comes in. So the first one 
uh, was based on the 1985 Highway Capacity Manual, and we've consistently changed. And now there is a uh, HCM uh, 6, Highway Capacity Manual version 6, uh, which had a number of changes in it. And so Gina and um, our consultants have been working. Uh, this is just a screenshot of the, uh, the, the daily traffic for urbanized areas um I point out for those of you not familiar with it uh, we do not only have um automobiles for both uh, streets and arterials but also freeways um and we have for two lane roadways and for what i like to call rural multi-lane but we also have the bicycle and pedestrian as well as the, you can't see it on this screenshot uh, but also the transit mode and these are very just simple uh, usable first cut tools for um, level of service at the planning level um, this is a screenshot of an earlier change to uh, what the tables might look like based on the highway capacity manual version six uh, what we have is not what you see up there and gina has the new one and will probably be giving a webinar on that now uh, one of the reasons that that we updated this is that um, these tables have been uh, kind of the heart of, of many of the concurrency engines, part of the engines of the concurrency management systems of our local governments. Uh, if you follow a state uh, law, you'll know that uh, Florida DOT has, is now really more of a advisor to level of service standards for the for concurrency we're advisors on concurrency but we do not make the final decision but these tables have uh, been used all over uh, florida and as i said had been computerized to uh, um, assist with uh, assessing uh, fees for uh, areas in florida and from the questions that Gina gets, uh, it's obviously used all around the country. Um, I, I see a lot of the, the questions that come in, some from California, because it is easy to use and it is uh, a really, a really good first, um, really good first uh, cut at uh, planning level level of service. So with that, I you know, uh, was wondering how many of you have used our FDOT level of service maximum uh, service volume tables? And uh, I have a poll for this. And this is, uh, I'll launch this. I, So I gave you more than just one or two choices. give a few more seconds for more people to answer. I may have given you too many choices. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to close this and show it to you now. And uh, what I like is that, uh, whoa, the majority, well, the, the majority questions answered. Uh, the majority of people who, uh, you know, 40, 70, uh, about 70 percent of you have are either currently using them or have used them in the past. Um, we have uh, a few people that have no need for them. And then we have uh, about five people who don't even know what they are. Good news is if you go to our website um, and look up level of service, uh, uh, you will be able to find not only these tools, but actually be able to find some recorded webinars on how they are used. So uh, if you are part of that 11%, uh, uh, feel free to uh, email us if you want to know where they are and how to use them. We have some good materials on the use of the tables. All right, so I'm gonna hide that. And I'd like to point out that, that we've uh, blanketed the state as much as we financially could with uh, travel restrictions on uh, access management training. Uh, we did quite a bit in the Tampa, Bartow, and Pensacola area um, the year before. And uh, in 2018, um, we have uh, done uh, Jacksonville and DeLand just very recently. Um, there's a picture of, of Gina making all these people happy. So, yeah, so Gina, thank you. If they're not happy, they're at least learning stuff. And that's why their faces are so uh, serious. Currently, we have a series of highway capacity manual training based on the sixth edition. And uh, uh, just last week, uh, everybody but myself, so Chris and Gina and uh, Maria and Michael were down there. Um, giving hands-on training on the use of the um, highway capacity software, which is based on the new sixth edition. And uh, something that I want to point out to you that, that it's really kind of easy to overlook is the new title of the highway capacity manual. And that subtitle is a guide for multimodal mobility analysis. So it's more than just cars. It really is. There's, there's a lot of good information in it. And um, though I didn't put it in here, uh, in our summary, we will send you a link to um, a free portion of the highway capacity manual. It's called volume four. And uh, you can go there. There's a lot of uh, but you have to sign up for all the good free information that's on it. Uh, the actual highway capacity manual, three volumes, is quite expensive. And then the software, don't even get me started with how expensive that is. So the upcoming training we have in Bartow is, is uh, linked here. Um, I apologize if you try to get on and there is no room available. Uh, I just heard from Michael that because we have a very um, small uh, computer lab, uh, that there may be some, some uh, problems with regist registering if, if you're not a DOT employee, and so I apologize. All right, I have another poll question for you. 
and this is multiple choice too. Do you suffer from FOMO? And I'm gonna launch this. It's not a meta, well, I wouldn't say it's, it's actually a psychological condition. Actually, you'll find out it's, some people consider it serious. Um, all right. Let me give you a few more seconds here. So if anything, those people who don't know what FOMO is will learn something today, if nothing else. Okay. Let me give it four more seconds and I'm going to close it. Okay. I'm going to share this with you. Vast majority of you do not know what FOMO is. Uh, you got nine percent that say they they do have FOMO, and twenty three percent that say they don't. So I'm going to explain what FOMO is right after I tell you I don't suffer from FOMO. Um, but it's actually uh, it's, it's actually defined, and uh, you can look it up in Wikipedia. It's uh, I'll read it. Anxiety that can be exciting or interesting event may be currently happening somewhere, often aroused by posts you see on social media. So there's, you know, you're afraid you're going to miss out on something. So if you have FOMO, fear no more because you can sign up for the FDOT contact manager, which well, won't get rid of all your FOMO, but when it comes to training and when it comes to new documents, updates to new documents, this should uh, help you because uh, if you sign up on this, it, it is kind of clunky uh, website, but it, we do provide some guidance on how to sign up for it and we're happy to help you out with it as you sign up. Um, all right. So this is the link to- Gary, the, Gary you may want to close the poll. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, so fear no more. We're gonna show you how to sign up for the contact manager. Thanks a lot. Okay, so you would click here. It's not showing, Gary. Oh, what? It? Oh, hide. You know, and hide. There we go. I'll wait until everybody can see what they're supposed to see. So. Uh, and okay did i ever share it with you okay so you're seeing the poll from whether you have fear of missing out right yeah we see the result see the poll okay result. well i'm saying i'm hiding it and it isn't okay it should actually go away but for some reason, it's not. And so I'm going to, it's malfunctioning here. So I'm going to go to manage polls and see if I can just uh, get rid of it. Okay. Me. Okay, it closes that. 
Yeah, the um the polling. Okay, I'm gonna just start a new one. Maybe that's the way to do it. I'm gonna launch. Oh. Okay. Have you signed up? With I'm giving this a try. I'm just jumping right to the next poll. Maybe that will clear this. Okay. So I'm asking you whether you have signed up for the um, FDOT contact manager. And no matter what happens in this presentation, we will send you the instructions uh, when you get the handout for this. Okay, I am going to close this. I'm going to share it. And so there you see that most of you have not signed up, but it is a good thing to do. And then I'm going to hide this. And then it goes back to the FOMO. Hmm. Okay, now I'm going to go forward. And it is not moving forward. Uh, let's see, close this panel. It still doesn't do it. All right. I got to tell you, this is. Uh, I've looked at everything. I'm going to um, maybe try this. Okay. Now you see it. I yes, just, we do. I just went to a new screen, and that was the way to do it. Thank you for telling me this. Um, so, what you do is you go to that link and uh, you create a new account. It's fairly straightforward. You create a password and um, you submit it. And then uh, you have this thing called uh, edit interests. Now my interests when I did it with the Florida Green Book, uh, the intersection design guide, the environmental manual, level of service, uh, site impact software, internalization passed by software, neither of those uh, I really believe are, uh, are still valid um, choices. And even if you did uh, hit them, we're not updating those. But um, what I wanted to show you uh, was that on your interests, if you and you're going to have to play with it but under planning you'll see access management growth management and level of service those should give you uh, the ability to sign up for any time there is an update in access management growth management and level of service uh, and anytime there's an update on that plus training you will get a notice of it, okay? I apologize for how long it took to get here. Um, but there it is. And let me end with who we are again and who you should contact for uh, any other questions. Um, I'd like to have some action shots of people. Uh, we got uh, McGuire's in Pensacola, and we got Michael and uh, his mother's homeland of Denmark, Gina in the mountains, Caitlin in Jamaica, and me in my hometown of Baltimore, and Chris um, with a, just a good shot so you know what he looks like when you talk to him. Okay. Um, uh, any questions before we sign off? If you do have, ah, okay. If you do have any other questions, and, and feel free to ask us. We will be providing a summary with lots of links and uh, some attachments uh, that should be that should be helpful to you. And. Uh, I 
uh, bid you a fine farewell and uh, uh, perhaps I might be involved uh, uh, after I've relaxed <laughs> in one of these in the future. And uh, Gina and uh, Chris and Michael and uh, Caitlin will be taking these responsibilities over in the future. So uh, with that, now I got a question here on the PDH credit. And Caitlin, I believe we do. I believe uh, PDH credit's the easy one, right? Right. If you'll just shoot me an email, I'll get your get you a um, certificate, and that's probably okay. the easiest way for you yeah. to log those yourself. Okay. Yeah, because PDH are um, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's self. self yeah. Okay. And as far as APA AICP. Um, that's up in the air right now, depending on how quickly we could uh, get a number or whether they're going to insist that it have, have been taken care of before. But uh, if you need AICP credit, um, we might be able to work something out with a workaround. So just uh, send that to us, okay? All right. Well, Ali, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, you'll be getting your PDH credit. And I've heard it's going to become really important in the next few months. So um, with that, I am going to end this. And it was recorded. And we are going to send you a summary. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. And Gary, thank you so much for a great presentation today. Ah, thank you. And thank you for, for joining at end, Gina. <laughs> Thank you thank, for taking thank it you over. All. And thank you for taking over such major responsibilities when I go. So <laughs> you'll be missed, Gary. You'll be missed. Okay. And thank I'll you, tell everyone. You I'll miss doing this too. All right. Uh, good day, everybody. And uh, I hope to uh, run into many of you as, as much as possible in the future. So we will end now.